So this is another example of how you can use counting techniques to solve a probability problem. So in this problem, I'm going to just go ahead and read the problem. We want to know how many ways can eight people be seated in a row if A, there are no restrictions on how they are seated, B, persons A and B must sit next to each other, C, there are five men and they must sit together, D, there are four men and four women and no two men or women may sit together. So let me, if you want to, I recommend that you try to work this first and then go ahead and look at the solution that I'm going to give. So go ahead and pause this and try and work these. Okay, so in terms of the solution, for part A, there are no restrictions on, on how they are seated. So if we think of the actual seats, I'm representing those as lines, seat one, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up to seat eight we have eight people. So for seat number one, there are eight choices for who can sit there. When we get to seat number two, we've already seated one person. So now there are seven choices. No matter who sat in seat one, there's always gonna be seven choices for seat two. Once the first two seats are filled, there are six choices for seat three, and so on, all the way down to three times two times one. So if we just wanna think in terms of permutations, what we were doing is we are figuring out all the ordered arrangements of eight people taken out of this group of eight people. So that is gonna be eight factorial, or it's the permutations of eight things chosen from eight, which is eight factorial over eight minus eight factorial. Moving on to part B, and again, if you haven't done part B, go ahead and work that out. Pause the video. Okay, the solution for part, in, for part B. In B, we're gonna have persons A and B sitting next to each other. So we want an easy way to do this, not easy, but a helpful way is to think of A and B as being glued together, kind of like they're one person. So because we've kind of melded these two people into one person, we have A, B, and then we have the six remaining people. So um, six other and six other people. So the number of ways that we could arrange this group AB that we're thinking of as one person and the six other people is going to be seven factorial. But that's not actually going to be our answer because we have two choices to make. So first is the number of ways to permute AB and the six others. That is going to be seven factorial. But we also have an, one more choice, which is the order that we seat A and B in. So we could seat A, B in two ways, as A, B or B, A. So there are two choices there. So using the fundamental theorem of counting, we can multiply these two numbers. So the total number of ways we can seat these people when A, B have to sit together is going to be 7 factorial times 2, which is, okay, part C. In part C, there are going to be five men and they must sit together. So we're going to use the same idea where we have the five men, we think of them as being glued together, A, B, C, D, E, as a group. And then, let's see, that's F, G, H, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we, the first step is to figure out how we could permute this group of five men, all stuck together, and the three uh, women in the group. And the number of ways to do that is gonna be four factorial. So the number of ways to seat this group of five men and the three women Oops. is four factorial. But there's also different orders that the group of five men could be within that group. So ABCD has five factorial orderings or seatings within this group of men. Let me say just within the group. 
So, right? So, because you, you could have something like B A D C E or lots of other, actually, what, 120 other ways. So now we use the fundamental theorem of counting to combine these two choices. We are going to have 4 factorial times 5 factorial as our answer. And that will be 2,880 possible seedings. Okay, for the final part D, there are four men and four men, women, and no two men or women may sit together. So four men, four women. And no two men or women may see, sit together. So let's just think about the seats. So we have our eight seats. And the number of choices that we have for the first seat well, just in terms of gender, the first seat could be either a man or a woman. So we could have a man or a woman here. So there are um, two choices for, for the gender that sits in the first seat choices. Okay. Then we have to alternate. So if the first seat is a man, it can't put a man next because no two men may sit together. So if the first seat is a man, the next seat has to be a woman, and then if for the next seat, we can't put a woman, we have to put a man because no two women could sit together. So it's going to alternate MW, 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 MW. If a woman is seated in the first seat, then we'll have um, the seating has to alternate woman, man, woman, man, woman, man, woman, man. So there are these two choices for the first seat and that completely de determines the sequence of genders in the other seats. Now, if we want to know, once we have chosen whether a man or woman goes in the first seat, how many outcomes there are going to be, let's look at this first possibility. For the men, the four men in there, there are going to be four factorial ways that I can place those four men in those seats. Similarly, for the women, there are going to be four factorial ways to place the women in the four seats that they, to arrange them in those four seats that they have to sit in. So there are two choices, let me just write this out, two choices for the first seat gender, M or W. And once that is chosen, there are going to be four factorial ways to arrange the men just within the four seats that they have to that they have to sit in. So you're just arranging them among those four seats, times four factorial ways to arrange the women. So if I multiply those together using the fundamental theorem of counting, I'm going to get, um, so there are going to be 1,152 ways you can see in that instance.